Welcome to Fab Commander. Today we talk about logging from notebooks to log analytics. What is this exactly and why is this important? We will build our pipelines and our transformations in our architectures using notebooks. We will have lots of notebooks in schedule and running and we will need to know what's happening. Is, are there any errors? Is there any problem with the execution of the notebooks? We need to know this information. Log Analytics, on the other hand, is a great centralized log system in Azure. It's part of the Azure Monitor. If we can send the logs from a notebook to Log Analytics, we can use all the benefits of Log Analytics in Azure Monitor. Let's see how we can do this. First, let's talk a bit more about Log Analytics and understand what we're talking about. Log Analytics is part of Azure Monitor, a monitoring system inside Azure. From Log Analytics, from the logs reach Log Analytics, we can generate alerts from them, we can generate dashboards from them, we can make analysis in Power BI from them. There is an article here on my side, you can see on my side, a link to an article about analyzing data from Log Analytics in Power BI. And you can export the data for other places, for different places. All we need to do is to make the log reach Log Analytics. Once it reach Log Analytics, we have all these possibilities available. But how can we make the logs reach Log Analytics? Here we have a Power BI workspace. The first thing that I will show to you is how not to do it. We have here the workspace settings and we have Azure Connection inside workspace settings. In these Azure Connections, we have an option for Log Analytics. We can connect a workspace directly to Log Analytics by using these workspace settings. This would be great, but this was built for Power BI and was prepared for Power BI. Power BI objects such as reports and semantic models already send logs to this log analytics connection. But fabric objects don't do so. Notebooks, for example, don't send logs to this log analytics connection. We need a different way to make logs on notebooks. Here I have a notebook. Before showing how to send the logs to Log Analytics, let us go over how to make the logs. This notebook is making something very simple. I'm loading a table to a data frame and displaying it. Then I'm creating a log. I import the login library and I use this long and strange command to create a logger object. When creating a logger object, I give a name to the logger object. And this name is very important because this name makes it easier to find in the middle of the logs the message from one specific source. So we may create this on notebook level. Each notebook may have a different logger. So we may have different ways to create this and implement this in relation to the logs. After I created the logger object, I can generate the message. You see, info message, one message, and error message. In this way, this notebook is creating logs. But, as I will illustrate, these logs are not going to log analytics. Let's see the result of these logs. Let me execute this notebook. The execution is completed. It's common that the logs may only be fully registered after stopping the session. So we we'll stop the session before analyzing the logs. Session stopped successfully. Then I use the op option View All Runs in the Run menu. View All Runs and now I can check the session. I have here the, the Spark information about the execution. Let me come to logs. The logs are generated appear in STD as an error. 
let me check this video. I have the latest in all. To be sure, I check everything. Let's get all. Load older. To be sure, I check everything. And now let's filter. An easy way to find our message. Let's look for my emitter. And here it is. My log message, my custom log message inside the Spark logs. So I generated the logs using those statements we just saw. But these logs are only inside the Spark environment. I, I don't have these in Log Analytics. This is not being sent to Log Analytics. Let's see how to send these logs to Log Analytics. The secret to do so is to use a set of Spark configurations. These are the purpose that we need to generate in order to send our logs to Log Analytics. First, we define the emitters. What is an emitter? An emitter is an object which captures the logs we generate and send to a destination. We can have multiple emitters at the same time. We can create an array of emitters in this property, but this is beyond our scenario at the moment. After defining the emitter, and this is a custom name, we define the purpose of the emitter, type, categories, the categories of logs that we will capture, the workspace ID of log analytics, and the secret of log analytics. How do I get the workspace ID and the secret? This is my log analytics in Azure. On the overview tab, we already have the workspace ID. It's the easiest one to capture, workspace ID. But I can come to Agents, Log Analytics Agent Instructions, and I have both the Workspace ID and the Secret. The Secret are the keys. I only need to use one of the keys. I can use the primary key or the secondary key. It doesn't matter. Both, any one of them will work. Both will work. I need to choose one and use this one in the proper in the Spark environment. That's it. And this is the information that I need to add to the property. And how do I set the property? To set the property, I need to create an object which is called an environment. An environment object defines how this pack session will work. We can define many details about this pack session, and some of these details are the properties. This is an example of an environment configuration and the properties being set inside the environment configuration. Once we have the environment defined, I need to get the notebook and configure the notebook to be executed according to this environment. I can set this on the notebook level. On the notebook level, I have the environment definition and I can choose the environment my notebook will use for the execution. But I can also go to a workspace and set the environment on the workspace level, workspace settings. I go to data engineering, Spark settings, and here I can set the environment. By turning on the set the full environment, this means that I'll be able to change the default environment for everything running in this workspace. Back to the notebook, we can see that the import statement that I was using when only logging from to Spark is not needed. The initialization of the properties will take care of that. I only need to get the logger and send the logs to Log Analytics. Let's execute this notebook. The execution is complete. Now we can check the presence of the logs inside Log Analytics. Let's take a look on Log Analytics. Log Analytics use custo to query the content of Log Analytics. So I can use a custom query like this one, Sparking login event underscore cl, where log name s equal my emitter. This is a custom query to retrieve our data, and here it is. At 11.26 UTC, 
I have my log information and the message that I sent to my log, here they are. My custom info message, my custom one message and my custom error message. From this point I can enjoy all the benefits of Azure Monitor to tweet this log information and manage this log information. Let's now discover some secrets about the emitters. First, Log Analytics needs to be in the same tenant as Power BI. If you try to send this to a different tenant, it will not work. Attention to the secret. One of the purposes that we set in the environment is a purpose with a secret of Log Analytics. This purpose should be handled very carefully. It is a secret. How can we improve this? How can we make this not so visible in the environment? There is an alternate set of purposes that we can use. You can see here at my side on the screen. If we use this alternate set of purposes, instead of using this log analytic secret in the purpose, we'll be pointing to a key vault and the key vault will be holding the secret. However, this set of purposes requires the user executing the notebook to have access to the key vault. And this sometimes may be a problem. It's something to consider if it's a benefit or not to change this to the key vault. Be careful about the need of an environment. I by myself I don't like the environment too much. Why? When the environment was first created, the environment object was first created, it had a session start time of up to 2 minutes. The session can take up to 2 minutes. This is too much for some scenarios. I work in a scenario where this is not acceptable. This start time of 2 minutes is not acceptable. So I can't use an environment in my scenarios. This can be a problem. If this start time is not a problem to you, okay, forget it, you can use it. But if it is a problem, you need to take care about the environment. Is the environment is still with this start time? Not exactly. They are applying some tweaks so the environment doesn't take two minutes on every start to execute. It will take two minutes sometimes on the first Cold start, and then this start time will be reduced and considerably reduced. It's an improvement, but not a full solution. Are there alternate options to an environment? Yes, there are alternate options to an environment. Let's talk first about what doesn't work. The first thought on our minds can be to set this purpose directly in code, like this code. Here, at my side, you could do that, right? Wrong! This code doesn't work. This code doesn't work because it's not only about setting the properties. On the very start of the session, once the properties are set, there is a jump start on the emitter. And if you set this properties directly in your code, this will not happen. There is a second option. We can use a magic command called configure. I already made a video about it. This option that we are also seeing on my side, this option works. This option works and it can send the logs to log analytics. However, the cold start time mentioned in relation to the emitter makes the start time of the session to be as bad as the start time for an environment. So this increases the start time to up to two minutes. Last but not least, there are other kinds of emitters. What other kinds of emitters? Besides the emitter for log analytics, we have an emitter for event hub and we have an emitter for storage account. So we can send our logs to event hub and process them as we would like or restore them in Azure storage account. These are additional possibilities for our logs. This is still a preview feature, but it's very promising and very important. 
Thank you very much for watching and see you next week.